Okay, so we're back here talking about fluid mechanics and uh, made some other videos looking at how to compute the flow rate, uh, the pipe diameter and the head loss in pipes given the properties of a fluid and the properties of the pipe material uh, using the Moody chart. And the Moody chart is handy in, for, for doing things on tests and it's a really interesting way that all the the science, the physics that went into understanding uh, friction losses in pipes are, are kind of synthesized together into one chart. But uh, in practice it is a, a chart and it requires a graphical solution and these are problematic for a few reasons. Uh, the, the main reason being that they require a you know, human usually to look at them and manually pick numbers off the chart and there's a, a lot better chance for a, a mistake when you do something like that. Uh, other thing is that uh, it's it's not as accurate and it it takes a lot longer than say a computer if you know how to use a computer and so I wanted to make a video here to kind of talk about how you can uh, use iteration uh, and, and that can help with developing computer solutions to, to problems like this. And so, yeah, as I've written here, the Moody chart can be used to solve for the flow rate and the diameter. Both of those are problems where you may have to iterate over and over again to get to a, a solution. But in real engineering practice, it's unlikely that you would use the Moody chart. It's a lot more likely you would use a computer program. So computers cannot read the uh, Moody chart, but they can iterate really quickly. And so as an example here, let's think about the von Karman formula for uh, the friction factor for a smooth pipe. Okay, so a smooth pipe meaning that the thickness of the roughness height of the pipe is a lot less than the thickness of the boundary layer, the viscous layer at the edge of the, the pipe. And in that situation, von Karman developed this formula here that describes the, the friction factor here. And so in looking at this formula, there's an F here on the left side, and then there's an F also over here on the right side inside of this logarithm. And this uh, having of the F on both sides of the equation here, with one of them being inside the log, makes it so that there's no way that you can get F completely isolated by itself. So if you wanted to get rid of this log, you could do 10 to, to the power of both sides, or E to the power of both sides, but then you'd have an this term in an exponential and this term not and so you would have the same issues you have with the logs. So there's no way you can put these two F's together and solve for it by itself. So this formula gives us a good example of how we can uh, solve for the value of F using an iterative approach even though there's an exact solution that, that can't be determined. There's no way to do that. Okay, So if we have the flow rate and the diameter then we can determine the value of the Reynolds number. Okay, so the other variable here in this formula is the Reynolds number, and it depends on the flow rate and the diameter, and then it becomes possible to solve for F, but there's no way to get F by itself. And so uh, we can solve this numerically, and the way to do that is, um, is just basically guessing a solution, a value for, for F, and then seeing if that value is, is right. Okay, so I want to show a quick example here of how you can apply that and so let's say that the Reynolds number for a system is 10 to the sixth power that's a perfectly reasonable number that you might see in a real system for like water flow or something else in a large pipe and uh, here we're asked to find the value of F here okay using von Karman's formula so I've taken the liberty here of rewriting the formula from here into the form shown there just this is F to the minus one half power and so if I do both sides to the negative two power then this becomes F and then on this side here I get this whole expression to the negative two power and so um, this kind of gives us a handy uh, approach to use an algorithm to so solve for the value of f. And so what we can do here is we can just guess a value of f, and then we can see if that guess is correct. And if it's not correct, then we can uh, try a new guess until we've come up with the right number. All right. And so by getting this f by itself here, even though it's on this side also, what we can do is we can guess a value and plug it into the right hand side here and then that will give us a new value for f and we can kind of use an algorithm here so if we if we started with guessing f is 0.1 and we know the Reynolds number is 10 to the 6 we can compute this side and then if it became say 0.05 
and we'd say, okay, so let's start with 0.05, and you put that back in, and then it says it's 0.04, and then again, until it doesn't change anymore. And this approach works pretty well for the formulas that you see in, for computing the friction factor in, in fluids problems like this. So, uh, and of course we know from the Moody chart, we have a general idea of what a reasonable range of values is for the friction factor, so that kind of makes this a little bit easier to, to do also. So you can see here in Moody's equation that it goes from 0.008, up to uh, 0.1. So a good starting guess for F, and we expect it's going to have to end up somewhere between 0.008 and 0.1. A good starting point might be like 0.03 or maybe uh, 0.02. Those are both good uh, guesses right in the middle of that chart. Okay. And so here, yeah, I'm just going to show you how you can do that one. I've also made a spreadsheet that you can use to, to do this, and I will talk about the spreadsheet separately. Okay, so what we can do here is uh, I'm going to just make a, like a little table here, and I'll, I'll have a value for F. I'm going to have a value for F, and then I'm going to compute the right-hand side of this equation. So, so I'll have an F, and then we'll see what the value of 2 times the log of the Reynolds number times the square root of f over 2.51 all to the negative 2 power is and of course the Reynolds number in each case is 10 to the 6th power so that's in there but, but you could do this with a different value and so if we put f is uh, 0.03 which I said is a nice kind of round number in the middle plug that in for Reynolds number is 10 to the 0 0.6 so I'll just kind of write out the calculation you would do you can do this uh, by hand okay so you can iterate here uh, manually by hand and so this is 10 to the 6 for the Reynolds number and then we have 0.03 square rooted and then we have 2.51 and then all of that to the negative 2 power and that gives us a value of 0 0.010677. Of course, I've written out a kind of a ridiculous number of significant figures here, five significant figures. In reality, we could uh, we'd be happy to get two significant figures, but just for the point of kind of illustrating how this method can be used to get to a very an answer that is as precise as we would like it to be we can uh, I will show you the value so this is the value we got here and so clearly um, you know 0 0.03 is not equal to uh, 0.010677 that means our guess was incorrect so we could just make some other random guess here but but again the idea you want to be smart about how you guess is to to use the previous guess here uh, as the starting point for the next one. So the next guess I'm going to use then is 0 0.010677. And so if you have the, if your solution has the right kind of properties, it will it will have a tendency to go towards the the exact value if you iterate like this. In some situations, you have an, an unstable system, and then it will tend to it can easily tend to spiral out. And you know if you guess an f that's too far away, if you guess that it was like five something that's not on there, then this may blow up and not not converge. But in this situation, you know it, it actually works. So we we guess this, and then if I do this calculation here, which I'll just you know put a parenthesis. Imagine we're doing all that again with the 0 0.0106. Then I get a new value of 0 0.011740 okay and so that then becomes my next guess and you can see that it you know it changed from 0 0.03 to 0 0.0106 and now it's changed only a little bit so as the changes get smaller and smaller we can be more confident that we're getting close so 11740 and then here we do this calculation again and we get 0 0.0 one one six three six and then if we use that one point oh one one six three six then our right hand side becomes point oh one one six four six and so you can see how you know in one guess we went from point oh three to I guess just looking at the left side here 0.03 to 0.011 
we changed, you know, in the in the first significant figure, and then the second one we changed in the second significant figure from 0.0106 to 0.0117, and then the third one we changed to in the next significant figure, and um, so we're we're very very quickly getting to something that's very close to the exact solution, and you can get as close as you want uh, for a given problem this way. Okay, and so this is a handy way you can uh, do problems. The key idea here being that you you make an assumption and then you check that the assumption is right and then you use that to help update your guess. Okay, and this le approach lends itself well to a spreadsheet and I'll make a separate video about that later.